Well, my friends, just a couple days ago I was charging up the battery in the snowmobile and I was saying that winter is coming. I wish I never said that. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Woke up to winter this morning. This is mid-October. This is wrong. Life on the mountain. Well, we got a nice quiet morning here. There's no wind. So we're going to take one of these pines down. Uh, the other one I'm going to get cabled up. But I really want to have two come-alongs on that one because that's the real dangerous one. This one here I'm really not concerned with. It's got to lean in the right direction. All the weight is on one side. I put a cable on it just because I have them and it's cheap insurance. The other one, unfortunately, all the weight is on the other side and plus it's leaning towards the building. So we're going to get set up and cut one of them down. Here we go. Yeah, I've got the cable hooked on there. It's really not needed because you can see that it's got some lean. All the weight is on that side because all the branches are on that side. It's just the opposite with that one. That's a big, big pine. I just really am concerned about having it standing there if we get some high winds because it's no longer protected by the canopy of this one. But we'll see. I've got the come along hooked over there, but I'm going to notch it to hopefully fall down through this path. I'd like to spare these two maples, but we'll see what happens. Well, the day has finally come, and we're going to put those dangerous pines on the ground today. Now, I'm pretty confident they'll land where we want them to. We've cut a lot of timber together over the years without any mishaps. We've just never cut any trees this big. Mama adds a little more tension to the cable, and since I only have a 20-inch bar on my saw, and the tree's much wider than that, I'll have to attack this one from both sides. Giving myself a line to follow will help me cut the notch more accurately. A bit more tension on the cable will convince the tree to surrender to the opening I made with the notch. Then it's time for the final cut. Hopefully it won't destroy any of those maples on its way down. Here we go. So, like always, I put one of my El Cheapo cameras right in the path. And in the past, you've seen where the wind of the treetop knocked the camera over. And I thought that was going to happen this time because um, I knew it was going to be close. And you, look at this. This is where the tree went down in that swath like I hoped. Come along was hooked there. <laughs> yeah, look at that. This is the, the tree, the top broke off right there. That was a foot away. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at judging where the top will fall, how tall the tree is. And we've done that a lot, come real close. I think that's the closest I've ever been. Maybe not. One of these days, the camera's going to bite it. <laughs> <laughs> that tree there is a dangerous one. Yeah. We're going to get some cables on it. I don't think I'm going to pull it in this direction. I'm going to go in a different direction.
Well, the big pines are on the ground. No damage done. That one went right in that slot. And that one went right in that slot. I was hoping that it wouldn't bust up these maples. I was afraid that it would. The only damage is up there. There's just a little bit of broken branch up there and that's it. Yeah, that was good. Worked out slick. Oh. Once I had the cables hooked up, getting ready to cut the notch, the wind starts kicking up. I was getting a little bit concerned about that, but it calmed down. A little window of opportunity, <laughs> took it. Come down perfect. So relieved to have these on the ground. Those two pines have been concerning me, especially the other day when they were covered with snow and hanging over the building. <laughs> but got them down, got them down safely, and I'm thrilled. So now I can build my frame and put the solar panels up there and not worry about branches falling down on it. Yeah, well it's mission accomplished once again. Well, now that these pines are down and I don't have to worry about those anymore, I'm going to just leave the logs where they are for now. I can tackle those at my leisure. And I'm going to focus on wrapping up some of my projects that have been hanging in the balance. Stuff I have to get done before the ground freezes. In this little blast of winter that just came and left, Thank, thank God that it left. Anyway, that was a wake-up call for me that I got to get on the stick and get this other stuff done. Okay, one thing is getting this uh, trench dug and run the conduit from there where the power is going to be generated with the solar and then feed the camp with that. That's the way I want things done, so I'm going to get it done. And then a couple of changes in the garden here. Now, one thing I just did, you can see I brought the grade up here. Okay, that was that drainage ditch that I made for the runoff, and it already works good. When we get a hard rain, that's full of water, and it's draining right away. But I also noticed the sun was pooling up over here. So I brought the grate up, and now as water comes downhill, I have one drainage ditch right here. It's not very deep, but it does channel water really good down into that ditch down there okay I didn't dig this deep because I have a stump right here once I pull that I'll dig this deeper so a lot of the runoff that comes downhill gets trapped there already runs away but then some other stuff will come here and you can see that it just kind of goes right down there and now that little high spot will send it where it belongs and down the hill it'll go. And here on the garden, you can see we have it picked. There's just a little bit of Swiss chard left. Uh, we got manure put on top of the mulch that we have. And then I'm going to get another big bale of, uh, big round bale of mulch hay. And I'm going to put it on top of that. This garden will never be tilled. And I'm going to be doing a follow-up video on the video I did a few years ago about the deep mulch gardening method. This is the way to go, folks. Now, you saw that we had fantastic results with a first-year garden, with all the obstacles that we had. Well, next year's garden is going to be better, okay, because of the mulch. Yeah. But again, I'll be talking about that in the future. Now, when I was putting in the stone wall, you remember how soupy this was? I was playing in the mud here. And I wasn't sure how everything was going to pan out. And I terraced the garden up like you see. Well, this worked out really good. So what I'm going to do now, knowing how well this works, I'm going to take these raised beds out of here. And I'm going to put them on the other side of that fence because we're extending the garden outward. I'm going to build another stone wall right here. Maybe just a little bit lower than that one. Then I'm going to fill this whole thing up and it'll be one continuous bed. Then there I finished the skirting. You see that's tapering down. And then I'm going to do the same thing, tapering up to the stones here. And that'll catch water, and that'll go down and out. 
When you're living on the side of a mountain, you have to pay attention to where the runoff is and send it where you want it, not where it wants to go, you know. Here in my little lean-to, I had an old metal cabinet, so I mounted it to the wall. This is where I'll keep all my oils and stuff, my grease guns and stuff for the tractor. That'll be good to have it out here and not taking up space in my workshop. Now, remember the old car that was in the woods here? Um, sometimes you see it in the background of my videos. Well, since we've been taking trees down and extending the yard, the car is in the yard now, which I don't want. So, I was over here one day and I got a little carried away with the tractor. <laughs> yeah, I got a little bit carried away with the tractor here. And once I started pulling a few things off, I couldn't stop. I kind of went nuts with it. So I've got it in piles and I'm going to slowly take it to the dump a little at a time. <laughs> yeah, kind of crazy. In some ways it's sad to see it go, but in other ways I'll be happy it's gone. <laughs> then I got these logs over here. Now these were the big pines that were right behind the camp that we took down last year. I just stacked them up here and I put them here so they will get blue stained and bug riddled. Now I know a lot of people don't understand that, but that's okay. <laughs> because I know when I saw into these logs and the boards are all blue stained, they got worm holes, they're all bug riddled, they just look awesome. It's fantastic wood for the interior of a cabin. And that's where they're going to go. The, the, the lumber from these logs and the pines that we just took down are going to go into our next cabin. I know you're going, what? Next cabin? What are you talking about? <laughs> yes, Lori and I are going to build another off-grid cabin. But I'm not going to tell you about it right now. I'm not. you got to wait till the next vlog. All right? Yeah. Exciting plans that we have for the future. So, I'm going to head inside. We got some rain coming. I'm surprised it's not raining right now. It's really cloudy out. But I'm going to go inside. I got to do a couple of things. And then I want to get the dogs for a walk before it starts pouring. So, I know a lot of folks have been waiting for the pines to come down. Now they're down. And that's one huh, less thing I have to worry about. So, that's it for now, folks. All the best to you, and God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss